During my research, I discovered a problem. And the problem, I can do some things about it as a legal researcher, but a lot is actually in your hands. So I'm go giving this talk for you as well. Um, the problem I dis discovered is about the burning of fossil fuels and how it's creating climate change. At this moment, there's decisions that are being made that can either destroy the planet or they can help us to make use of all the creative potential of us to save the world and get more out of the sources that it has instead of destroying it on the way. So the way the system works now is that we have a central system where a large producer of coal or other source of energy provides electricity to us. So who of you actually ever thinks about it, whether when you switch on appliances, if the electricity will actually get to you? Probably a lot of people won't even think about it, you just assume that it's there. But actually it's really, really remarkable that the system works that well. Um, who thinks that if there's too much electricity, we can just store it somewhere to use later on, just like other projects? Probably some people think that as well, but you can't say if you, for example, have a solar panel on your roof and it's producing electricity, it's like, stop now, I want to watch television an hour, so wait there. It's, it's, you can't do that. So, um, actually, when there's electricity, we immediately have to use it. And the way it works now is that the the, for example, the coal uh, power station, when there's, n when there's not enough uh, electricity, it just puts in a bit more coal, burns more, and when there's less demand, it burns less. Now, with the climate change issues, we have to rely more on renewable energies, and wind and sun, we can't just switch on and off. So actually, the, c the current system can't handle a lot of production of renewable energy on the grid. Now, new technologies fortunately can provide a solution. Um, with the help of information communication technology, ICT, we can m keep track of how much energy is produced where and when. And this development of adding ICT to the electricity grid is called, or commonly referred to as smart grids. Of course, it's called smart because everything that doesn't use ICT is dumb, and when you add ICT, it becomes smart, just like your smartphone. So that's the same with the electricity grid. So this system can help us balance uh, the demand for wind and sun and make optimal use of it. So for example, when there's a lot of energy, um, we can, instead of not being able to store it, store it now, we can just, for example, do, put it in our electric car, which we'll probably have by then. Um, and on the other hand, when there's not enough, you can give, the system can give your house an instruction to just um, delay your washing a bit, or maybe turn down the temperature in your home for a bit. And it could also be a means to cooperate with your community. It could be ev even be a means for the, a game, like in the last session when we were talking about, to get like, everyone involved in the system. There's a lot, a lot of possibilities in this development. But actually, I can't even predict what it will be. It's a bit like the internet. The internet is a means where there's a lot of information, and um, it's, it's basically a way of sharing information. With smart grids, we're sharing energy. And if you think about it, it's quite miraculous, all the stuff that we can do on the internet right now. We can have a video calling, we can have um, roadmap navigation, we can even have live streaming of videos, just like this TED Talk. And when you think about it, the internet was sort of started in the 1960s, but only for the last 15, 20 years, we actually are using it and di discovered the, what we can actually do with it. And it, it really needs some courage and, and thinking outside of the box and outside of the new system to realize what a system can do for you. And all these ideas from the internet, they all came from new companies. It's not from established companies. It's actually the success came from uh, that they just made something out of nothing, either an individual or a small company that thought, okay, this, we can use that for that. Now, smart grids are, well, there's actually a big difference between the development of smart grids and the internet. Um, the internet was left very open. The whole architecture had a few protocols just to get communication started. And this allowed for a lot of new companies to make these um, to add these applications. Smart grids 
are developed by huge multinationals at this moment. They're all preparing it all over the world. Um, mostly just assume that in a short time there will be smart grids. Um, I found a list from NASDAQ that has about 32 companies, the biggest companies that are involved in smart grids right now. A Cu couple of them are ICT, some transmission system operation, even some oil and gas industry. Um, there's only a few of them that have some focus on energy efficiency, but there's only four, four out of 32, that actually have their market in renewable energy. So this whole transition is actually based on only four out of 32 for renewable energy. Now, all these, these parties that are involved in this, they, of course, all have their commercial interests. And all these commercial interests actually disables them from letting go of the way the current system works. For all these companies to work together, they need to set technical standards for all the different aspects of the grid to communicate. And in these uh, standardization processes, they decide what smart grids will do. So actually, this whole process is very powerful. Um, it's often even used by, uh, uh, as a policy tool for governance. Now, standards will restrict possibility, and where the internet was very open and allowed all these possibilities that I just mentioned, standards will actually sort of close off a lot of creative ideas because they just, they don't allow for all the possibilities anymore. Now, in the worst case scenario, there would be, for example, the 10 biggest players. They'll have all their products in the smart grids. The whole system will be less efficient because there's a, a lot of computer and, and servers that need to, need to consume energy as well. Um, it can provide threats for personal data, for your privacy, because you, know, you don't know who's going to actually know what kind of electricity you're going to use. Um, it could shut off the possibility of 100% renewables because the companies do not believe that that is actually what is possible. It could even cause additional CO2 emissions because all the products that are developed for the smart grids to work will, of course, also provide more CO2 emission. And this could, in the end, um, have very detrimental uh, effects on our planet. Just, I mean, standards, it's not like these are horrible things. They also have some very good benefits. For example, I'm labeling cross-border trains between countries and making sure that when you buy uh, products from a different brand, you don't have to change the, everything in your ho house and meter and everything, so everything will still work together. The only thing about the process is, is that it's established by multinationals, and we as a consumer are barely represented in this process. For example, one of the European standardization organizations, there's one consumer representative for 500 million Europeans. And then there's 45 representatives for one multinational. So it's just a bit off balance there. A little bit. <laughs> Now, of course, I don't believe that all these, these multinationals have horrible intentions. I really don't think so. It's just that I think there's a really big risk of their focus on commercial interest and unwillingness to let go of the current system um, that will just keep us going the way we're doing now. And we need change. Because, actually, there's a very big cap gap between this worst-case scenario, what's actually the way we're heading now, and actually a 100% renewable energy system. And you can help me bridge this gap. <laughs> One of the things that you could do, for example, if you have some technical expertise, just get involved in a standardization process. There are actually public inquiry phases where you can give comments, and they have to listen to you, so just take your chance there. The other thing is, if you're in a company that's somehow involved in smart grids, you're actually the one that can make this change. You are the one that the future of us, our children, our grandchildren depends on, on. So you can make sure that your company works for corporation instead of short-term girls. And in the end, I mean, I'm just Robin. I'm a legal scholar. I don't have the solution. So I'd say let's use our full creative potential. And with that, let's close the gap between the horrible future and the future where we all cooperate together for sustainable energy.
Thank you.